Hey guys. Oh, hello. Check it out. We're live, Trevor. Hey, we're on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna brighten this a little bit. So, um, hey everybody, thanks for checking in, coming in. Um, we have uh, several special guests today. We have Archie the dog. Say hi, hi Archie. Archie. Go away, dog. Go away. Go away. Go away, Archie. He's a lot of trouble. Um, we may, we may have to put him in his crate. Go. Go. This is my boyfriend Max's dog, he's and uh, he's a he's a puppy and he's crazy. Um, and so, no, I'm not his boyfriend, Max. I'm uh, Trevor. Yes, that's exactly. As many people love to keep asking. Let him ask. Um, so anyway, we're here to talk about the show, um, season two coming up, and all of that stuff. As uh, as I mentioned in the post, also we're going to be talking about uh, coming out stories. We're going to be talking about first dates. We're going to mm -hmm. be talking about some fun stuff and. We look forward to hearing from you guys' comments about that so we can get a conversation going. We'll comment on your comments. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and in fact, there's already comments. Um, so first of all, again, want to thank everybody for coming in and for, uh, you know, with regards to the show, for showing so much love and yes. for watching it. We're, I think we're at like 1.3 million views now, which is crazy. Cool. You know, considering this is just a thing that we whipped up. Yeah. Put up there on the... Uh, on the YouTubes, on the interweb, on the interwebs. Um, so let's just check this out real quick. John Hall, thank you for doing these live streams. No matter your stories, we are grateful for being allowed to get to know you. Well, thank you, John. John Hall is that the John Hall from LA? Could be. Who's retired and used to be a manager at Studs Lounge in North Hollywood? Let us know, John. Is that you? You were my boss for a while. If that's you. Um, on your birthday, I was wearing leather harness working the bar. Um, hey, oh, wait, Dave, Dave is checking in. Uh, let's... Yes, Dave is saying, um, we'll get into this eventually um, about season two, but Dave is saying, send us dollars. Check out our, our campaign for uh, season two. Um, there's a cool new perk, by the way. We're doing a, thank you, Trevor. Trevor's always fixing sure, that. Um, Trevor, not Trevor. Uh, we have a, new, a cool new perk on the campaign. Um, we're doing a live show with me and James and Getty and Trevor um, on the on the locker room, which we did once before. It's a really great show. Alan Locker is a, an amazing interviewer, and he's just a sweet guy, really really funny. Yeah. Um, so the four of us are going to be on the show for the first time. We're going to see the whole cast together, which is great. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but what's interesting about this is in the campaign. So we're in our in our Indiegogo campaign. If you go check it out and look at the um, the perks, one of the perks is you can come on the show with us. So sitting at your home with your computer or your 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 iPhone, you can log on and you'll appear on screen with us. You know, we'll be a couple boxes and you'll be a box and we can interact and you can ask us questions and mm -hmm. we can have a nice conversation. So if you're interested in being a part of the show, The Locker Room, check out the Indiegogo campaign and uh, check out the perk there and come join us. It's limited. We're only, I think we're only allowing four spots. So, um, you know. Make your mark. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's questions. Um, okay, so Spanish subtitles. Um, that's a great thing. So we are now. I'm pour myself coffee real quick. We we just yeah. Trevor just we made coffee for Trevor, so he's gonna go fuel up. Um, but just so you know, subtitles has been an issue. People have been asking for um, from Turkey, from Portugal, from China. For, like everybody wants subtitles and. YouTube generates subtitles automatically, but they're terrible. They're always wrong. So we're now going in and we are entering the scripts. I'm looking at every episode. I'm um, correlating the scripts so they represent what we actually ended up shooting. So like um, pretty soon, um, actually the first episode, it's not worth looking at right now. The first episode has perfect subtitles in any language. Um, we hope to in the next few weeks have every episode covered. So uh, every nationality will be able to hit their particular language and watch, watch him be funny. Watch and little disclaimer, speaking of all of our episodes, I do want to let you all know, and some of you might not know, that um, when you're watching it, there's episode five mm -hmm. and episode 10. Oh, 10. Uh, you have to like... Uh, you have to log in. You have to log in. Otherwise, if you're just watching YouTube without logging in, it'll skip episode five and episode 10. It won't even tell you they're there. They're like X-rated. 
because of a sex scene and maybe some vulgar language. Yeah, there's there's something in five that it's a sex thing. And so and for those of you who might have seen the series, you might not have seen episode five or ten. So just disclaimer, look into that because yeah. you might have missed a couple episodes. It's pretty funny. Episode five was uploaded and within 24 hours it had a hundred thousand views. It was so fast. Um, but then boom, mm -hmm. they caught YouTube's eye and they're like, oh, this is a sex scene. This is this has got to be um, rated it's not a 18 scene. plus. It's just like it's not. scissoring and humping. That's the thing. Is that... <sighs> anyway, um, will this Charles Crossan is asking, will this ever transition to a full series? Um, that's actually the hope for season two. That's the goal. We're doing this fundraiser to raise money to shoot season two. And the goal is to shoot 10 episodes that are 22 to 25 minutes each. Just like a normal length of a six right. it's like, show without the commercials. Think of it as like um, Step Sh Shit's Creek. Yeah. You know, Shit's Creek full episodes. Yeah, Shit's Creek. Oh, full house. I mean, an homage of Bob oh. Saget. Let's have a moment of silence. Anyway, um, uh, Don Omar, thanks for the series. We were waiting. Oops. Ooh, comments are coming in. They're going fast. Okay, not the same John Hall. Cool. Got that figured out. Okay. Uh, uh, we should stick to what we're here for, though, right? We are okay. So questions after, yeah. Okay, we have lots of questions. Thank you for them. We will talk because they're going to keep coming. Um, because we want to talk about specific things. Um, we'll get into the show, and all that stuff. But we are actually here to talk about um, coming out stories. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a gay show. It's 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 not just gay, but it is a gay show. We have um, the main characters are gay, and um, it's very much part of the viewership. A lot of gay people are, and. Uh, our viewers and while you're talking can i just move us a little bit this way so i don't have the glare on the tv so it's just like that sure let me move us over this way. okay 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 that's good that's why you should be here for setup oh, yes perfect man i got a little glare here my... oh you're good can i make up a little powder um so we want to talk about coming out stories and um archie wants to share his get away um so trevor you know before we even get into that we have a Special guest. <laughs> no, you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. You just made this pop up. Okay, dog has to go away. Push him away. Please. Here, I'll put him in the bedroom. There we go. Come on. Uh, we lost the screen for a second, but it was just minimized. Um, so we we have a special guest that we are going to bring on. I'm going to text him right now. Um, okay. And but in the meantime, um. Trev, do you want to talk about about my traumatic past? Your traumatic past. Let's get okay. So we're gonna get Getty Watanabe on here. Um, Getty played Gary, and um, you know everybody loved Getty's performance. He was fantastic. Yeah, you know he was the heart of the show. Mm -hmm. um, so I am just getting him to call in right now. While you do that, I'm yes. happy to kind of take the microphone for a minute. Sure, please. Um, for the longest time, I actually never planned on coming out. Um, being gay was something I did not want to be. Um, you know, usually, I mean, it's not even a sensitive, sensitive subject. It's hard to articulate. Like, oh, he wants to come out. He wants to come out of the closet. So we just put Archie in the closet <laughs> and he's crying in the closet. He See, it's not fun. Um, no, I was born and raised in a small town and I didn't know many gay people. Um, I didn't have anybody to really relate to and growing up, you know, people just the default question is, Hey, do you have a girlfriend? Are there any girls you like? Um, you know, something I want to kind of expose my niece and nephew to are like questions like, Hey, are there any girls or boys that you like to make it okay? You know, and people would, you know, living in a small town, um, people always crack jokes about being gay in a derogatory way. So I knew it wasn't good. And I was a smart kid and I was like, you know what, this is something I don't want. This is something I'm going to keep a secret. And I realized like I was probably going to take it to my grave. So I was going to pretend forever. And, um, you know, I like girls, but, you know, when you're younger and you're finding your way as an adult, you start realizing like, oh, sex is a thing. Um, and I deep down, I knew I didn't I didn't feel the same way guys felt about girls. So. I just kind of played along. It's such a broad topic to talk about. Well, I mean, your own experience. So. Yeah, no, you know. I mean, how long do we have? <laughs> um, no, I, uh, you know, I just tried to fit in and go along, and um, it was really hard. I, I knew I liked guys, 
but I didn't want people to know. So I, um, I denied myself the chance to do double takes in public because I didn't want strangers. And I was like, oh, hey, look who that is. So um, we have, uh, I don't mean to interrupt Trevor's story. In fact, we will get to talk more. But um, in the meantime, hey, Getty. we have our dear friend, Getty Watanabe. Getty was going to be here with us um, today, but he has the flu, unfortunately. And he couldn't come. So we're hoping that you can see this. This is very like. Oh, it's perfect. Very old tech. There's Getty right between us. Getty, say hi. Getty? Can you hear us? Oh, oh. on speakerphone. Maybe not. No, I, let me turn this off. You know, we always have these technical difficulties. Speaker, it's, it's on speaker. Um, is it me, on Bluetooth? Yeah, let me turn the Bluetooth off. I was okay. hoping that we could hear him better on the Bluetooth. Um, where are we now? Hold on. He walked away. There's Getty. And um, I'm on speaker. He's on speaker. He's not in person. So we we're trying to rig up a way last minute that we could do that. And uh, the phone call just disconnected. Um, let me. All right, you do you, that. You keep talking. Um, yeah. From I stayed really busy in school. I was a part of a lot of clubs. I was really smart. Um, you know, it's common for a lot of closeted men to overcompensate and, you know, be good at a lot of things. So people would like you and accept you. I was afraid that if people found out who I really was, they would project me. So, uh, yeah, it's a weird psychological thing we do. Hey, Getty. Um, Okay, so Getty, can you hear us? Check one, two. I can. Oh, perfect. perfect. There, there we go. While you freeze, I apologize. Uh, it could be us. It could be we're asking the internet to do too many things at once. Keep it high so it doesn't touch the button there because it's touching the volume. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Here we go. We're almost done. And we'll tilt this back a little bit. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen. Getty Watanabe, can you see him? Yeah, they can see him. Getty, can we hear you talk? Damn it, it turned down Hello, again. Just, just, there we go. Check one, two. How is that? Is that better? Go. Yeah, it's better. Um, can we see in, in the comments? Can we hear from you guys? Can you hear Getty okay? Somebody quick give us a comment. Uh, <laughs> Trevor's trying to move the computer screen like it's an iPhone. There go. That would be a good thing. Yeah, um, they oh, this one. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. There we go. Better. So for oh, is my microphone in here. Oh, sorry. Oh, is that your? So he's got a technician on his can end. Can you hear me? We can hear you yeah. fine. Can you hear us? Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. People are my checking in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. We're hearing from people, Getty, that they can uh, they can hear you okay. So we just got on. Um, you know, we'll talk to you about some more things, but we just started this conversation about coming out stories. And Trevor was just sharing his. Um, it's oh, just... I'm sorry, Trevor. Oh, my God. No, no, it's it's um, anticlimactic. Um, <laughs> but do you want to do you want to say more? Sure. Um, you know, I again, I never planned on coming out. I, I accepted the fact that, you know, I'm probably not going to be um, with a guy because I didn't want to be you know, um, I didn't have any good positive influence on my life. It was, uh, so when you say you didn't want to be like, well, because I didn't know any gay people who had like happy lives. Yeah. The only gay people I knew were very, um, flamboyant and I wasn't attracted to them. So I just had this big disconnect and I couldn't connect or relate. Um, and I, it, it made me think like, this is not what I am. Cause I thought it was black or white, you know, I, well, that's, I think that's an important, I point. thought it really defined who you were. Well, but, just cause you, you talked about the, uh, the idea of you weren't attracted to them because they were flamboyant. Uh, I think you should stress that you're, that's very different now. Like when you first, well, I mean, there's like flamboyant straight guys too. So it's, it's just like, there's that stereotype that I was raised with, you know, in Hollywood at the time, really like. Uh, fed that stereotype as well, you know, and I find that in small towns and conservative areas, if you can hide being gay, you do, because you know what, 
we live in a puritanistic society where you have more power when you're a straight white man. And I knew what that felt like. And I knew what I would be losing had I come out gay and become like a minority. You know what I mean? And it's really sad that that's kind of where we come from traditionally. Um, so I kind of like, I had that fear because I knew life would be harder. You know, I saw like schools rough, you know, a lot of kids bullied and I, I saw the way a couple of gay boys in school were bullied and I didn't want to be bullied. So I joined the opposite team. So I became the bully, you know, and I realized like, that's how the real world is just on a bigger scale. Um, so I just kind of played along living in fear like most people do like you have some countries like like the middle east where the rulers like oh we don't have gay people here like the fact that you have like the government saying we don't have gay people like imagine being a citizen of that country right. being like well i don't even get acknowledged so why would i come out there is i won't have any respect or rights um yeah so i just you know i i i I accepted, like, I was like, I'm going to find a really amazing person to spend my life with and have a family because I wanted to be a father. I wanted to have kids, which I realize now I can still have as an adult gay man, um, especially today's day and age. Oh, shit. What? Like... <laughs> what is it, Getty? Oh, you can hear me. I'm yeah, I get it. <laughs> oh, oh, you're good. Like, um, yeah, and then... A... At uh, when I was 20, I was in pre med in college. Um, I wanted to be a doctor, I was really smart, so I was a year ahead in high school. And I graduated high school with a handful of college credits, and I was just on the path of committing my life to helping people. Um, committing to a life where I would be so busy, I wouldn't have time for relationships. So that was my alibi, that was my excuse. And, and then I had an opportunity to be an actor out in LA, and I grew up doing theater since I was a kid, I did so much so. I kind of took the opportunity and when I moved to LA, I never looked back and I discovered like how free people were and how they could express themselves and right. be themselves. And I met some really interesting people who I met were gay and they didn't allow it to define who they were, which was the only exposure I had in getting to know the gay community. And I finally found the strength after living in LA for three years to finally come out. And I realized deep down, I realized it was the one thing that was keeping me from being happy. Um, I tried everything else in the book to be happy and it wasn't working. And um, I finally expressed it vocally and I told people and it was such a release. It, the fear was much worse than reality. You know, in our minds, we create like the worst case scenarios that could happen. And it was the opposite. I was rewarded. The universe like gave me so many positive things. And since then, it's been a beautiful downhill journey. Um, I feel very fortunate to live in such a liberal city such as los angeles in california mm -hmm. um if i had stayed in buffalo i probably would still be in the closet and probably have a wife and kids and maybe have a somewhat happy life but not rewarding or fulfilled by any means right. you know yeah i think that's one of the things about when you are true to yourself when you don't let other people's opinions you know affect you if you just embrace who you are and you're strong about it you do have a better life. It, it is um, fuller and more rewarding. Yeah. And this guy said uh, he, the only gay person he knew was Jack and Will and Grace. And that wasn't me. So I wasn't gay. So he hears me, you know, like we have these examples that we don't really connect to. Had had I seen someone like myself 20 years ago, I'd be like, that guy's cool. Like, and I hope I can inspire people, young versions of myself who are out there to like be confident and well, not just young versions. I mean, old versions. We have older old versions. versions. We have a guy yeah. here, G.E. G. Goodwin, is saying that um, because of a family business, he's not allowed to um, open any closet door. Maybe we shouldn't say his name. If he's mm. discreet. Damn it. Well, I said it really fast. And yeah. Um, but he's known since he was four years old, and he's now 56. I mean, any suggestions? That, that's It's tough. I mean, if you're in a family business, if... Um, you know, something I can say from experience, just know the people that are in your life love you and they want you to be happy. So, and if they don't, if they don't want you to be happy, that's a problem. Well, and even if they crack jokes or you know their views and they're not in line with what you are, you have the ability to re educate them, you know? And I think a lot of people just def by default 
they choose to maybe judge something they don't understand. So it's up to you to kind of re-educate them. And, you know, maybe they will understand. Um, I think it's really important to kind of stay positive and have faith. And you know what? If they don't accept you, then those are people that you really don't want in your life. And it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, especially if it's family. But through experience, I find that the friends I make are the family I choose, you know, and the my relationships with my friends who have become my family are so much more rewarding than the validation I was getting from my family. Um, you know, I may never have the relationship I want with my family, but that's also OK, because I've discovered such a beautiful silver lining in the friends I choose as family. And it's really great. So I think a lot of you who may, might be in the closet might fear you'll be alone if you come out, you know, like, oh, I'm going to lose everything. Right. You've built this empire of a world, of a life, of friends, and you're afraid of losing that. Um, but if you really look in hindsight or if you stand outside yourself, you realize this life you've created is for them, not you. You've made choices to please other people. I was such a people pleaser and I was not doing anything for myself and you know what at the end of the day a lot of these people didn't really care like i thought they cared so much about what i was doing and at the end of the day like my parents responded like we just want you to be happy you know and right. it took them a few days slash a couple weeks to come around which was a shock to them because i did a really good job at acting straight um which is why i'm an actor i'm kidding uh but no they they came around and they said you know i wish you could have come out sooner um, which was a big surprise that that was their response. It was comforting. And I know a lot of a lot of friends that don't have that positive experience. And I'm very grateful to have the support in my family. My aunt's a lesbian, so she kind of broke the ice in my family. Very grateful for that. But, you know, my family comes from a very conservative religious background. So even though she's lesbian, I'm gay. My grandma was almost a nun before she met my grandpa and popped out seven kids. Um, so like, <laughs> that'll do it to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, people have different experiences, um, and I will not re read names here, but, um, somebody's commenting about how it's, um, it presents a special challenge coming out when you're in a minority group, especially those who come from conservative and religious families. And I think that's true because yeah. there's a doctrine that's so, um, ingrained that, uh, a lot of these, a lot of these people who are particularly in religions can't get their minds around they just look at you as, as, as sinful as you're going against God's word. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that can be tough. Um, I can say from my own experience, my mother's a devout Catholic, and that's the issue that we ran into. So when I came out to her, um, I was 27, 26, um, and she had a problem with it, you know, yeah. big time. She was, first of all, she thought I needed to go to a psychiatrist, and then she thought, like all these excuses of like why this happened and it's wrong. Well, a lot of that has to do with like when you have, when you're in religion, there's a sense of sacrifice. You know, you have a life of following certain rules and you live in bumpers. You don't overindulge because that's a sin. You don't have sex for indulgence because it's meant for procreation and all these traditional views. And I think for some reason they see gay men is like, because we're not procreating, we're having sex for overindulgence. It's and that's for recreation. It's for recreation. We're not supposed to touch yourself. Not You're not supposed, supposed to have to. pleasure. And the AIDS pandemic didn't do us any favors either because nothing good came out of that. Well, I will say, though, that um, my mom did. It probably took about three years, but she uh, ended up talking to a, a priest in our parish who um, was a younger guy. And he was just he had a different experience in life than the old Irish priest that we had up until that point. And he just said to her, like, this is your son and there's nothing wrong. And this is how God created him. And you need to love him. And what people don't realize is majority of priests are gay men. That's a different, that's, the that's a different live room. stream. We'll do another time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was yeah. going to say also just, just among the, the gay Asian community, it's really quite rough, you know, coming up with families. I've seen a lot of families just totally cut off and um, no support whatsoever. They seem to be really more adamant about it at times. I mean, I don't mean to compare it with anything, but the no. stories that I've come upon, just gay Asian, you know, um, LGBTQ people. Do you just, know? It's been really, really difficult. Do, Sorry, do you, do you have a sense ahead. though, Getty, of like where that comes from in that community in, in particular? Like what's the expectation well, that I it's going against? Oh, I, I think it's I think it's just matriarch of you know the family. Bring you know, shame to the family. You're supposed to marry. You're supposed to marry, have a child, you know, and and be a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you know that type of thing. So I think it's ingrained 
in 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 you know just our culture it's ingrained in that so mm -hmm. it just depends but and it's also different just somebody who is from a different uh, somebody who's foreign that comes into this country mm -hmm. you know i have as opposed to what i am i'm a gay asian american you know so it's it's a little bit different in dynamics and in and feeling and stuff so it's 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 very complicated and um I don't know. Is, is this, a, is that okay to interrupt? Like no, no, no. Cause I was just going to ask you okay, like off of this, like what, know. like what is your, can you share with us what your personal story was? Gary? I almost called you Gary. <laughs> Getty. Uh, well, that's my middle name. Actually, I know. So I know. you know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyway. Um, well, so I, I, my story, if <laughs> my story is that uh, I grew up in, uh, in, uh, in Utah. So I was surrounded by the Mormon. <laughs> And that in itself was quite uh, an extraordinary event right. because, um, you know, this was in the 50s too, 50s and 60s. So um, I don't even think that that was even expressed. I don't think even as a child, I even knew what that word was, you know, in my generation. Um, and um, so it was not until probably my my senior year junior year that i even heard the word gay even though i had feelings you know way back then and um you know and i think my first contact with with gay was was when my father took me to san francisco mm -hmm. and there was in in the 60s how, old, how I, old were you when that happened uh, i probably was how old were you when you're like in the seventh or eighth grade in uh, junior high I, uh, 12, 12, 12 or 13, 13. Long, I don't remember. It's like 11, 12, 11, 12, 13. And yeah. my, my father, uh, which I did market street in our old car or something. I can't remember and driving through, and there was a big protest about anti, uh, Vietnam war. And, uh, and my father, to my surprise, oh, look at those damn hippies. Oh, my God, those gay fags and stuff like that. It just came out of his mouth. And I went like, oh, my God, I had no idea. But I was kind of looking in the, you know, the back of the seat, looking back at me, going like, I want to be here. This is where I want to be. I don't care what my father said. I know, oh, my God, this is really exciting. You know, I knew inside that that was uh, something that I wanted to be, I mean, I wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. So, you yep. know, we were, uh, and the Mormons were, you know, God, there's such stories about the Mormons. I'm sure all of you are aware of that. I mean, yeah. that's such a repressive society, especially well, during that time. We have a comment here and, from somebody, uh, Getty, who is just uh, acknowledging, he said he grew up in Utah as well and did the whole Mormon thing oh, uh, and that his, that his you, folks were born in Ogden. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. Well, I was, I'm born in Ogden, Utah, too. Tell them if he knows Weaver State College. You remember? Because I used to go, I, I lived right across the street from there. I've actually, so, I've seen Getty's childhood home. I, when I was driving to, oh. remember, I was driving to, um, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, to I, the I, Grand Tetons. Yeah. I was going to, um, to uh, Grand Teton National address. Park and Getty told me where he lives. So I, I thought it'd be fun to stop in Ogden and and just take some pictures of his house so you can see what it looks like. Because how many years had it been since you moved out, your family moved out? Well, I left Utah in 19, I left right out, I left the day of graduation or did, did wow. two days before graduation. So you were like I think out I was 18 there. years old, 1973. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, were you born then? Trevor, what year were you Me born? Me or you? I was definitely born then. I was, I was. I'm an 80s baby. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Almost a 90s baby, so. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And the, the amazing thing is, is that now, you know, Salt Lake City has a huge gay community now. It's like it's changed so much since I've since I've been back and I still have friends, high school friends who are gay uh, and I keep in contact with them. And so it's just been I mean, they've got a long ways to go because it's mostly in the city. But sure. if you go outside of to Orem or to Provo or something is pretty conservative out there, but, but it's, uh, it has changed a lot. We, that's, we have a, really a clarification, by the way, the, oh, the, uh, the person who wrote in, who said his parents were from Ogden is actually David, our composer. 
Um, oh. I, I didn't recognize his his name on here. Uh, he said that his oh. parents went to Weber and Ogden High. Oh, so they went to my high school. I was like, oh my god, this is just a small so world. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I wonder oh if they god. went the same year. David, how, what year did your parents graduate? Yeah. That's no, they must be a little bit older than you. Um, but anyway, so what was it like? You know, when you told your your mom and your dad, like, what was that experience like? Me, you mean me? Yeah, Getty. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I forget. Um, you can't. Okay, yeah. So he doesn't see us. Uh, this is kind of this my story. That. My father died very young, so I never had the time to really talk to him because uh, about it. But my mother, um, I kept my mother. Um, it, it was a strange story because I think the, the background of my mother's story. And please, I, I'm not sure. My mother, uh, we realized, had issues, and I didn't know at the time. So um, I think what she did is she looked at gay as as something as that she knew, because I had mentioned it, and I actually told her. And her response was, remember I told you this, was her response was, oh, I'm so glad you're happy. So she couldn't really assimilate the word. You have to really kind of like stand in front of them and say the word which I didn't know at that time. And um, and I knew I wanted to get out of Utah. I had to get out of Utah because it was it was it wasn't gay friendly and also I was an artist. I knew that sure. at a young age that no, no, they're not open to that. There was nothing there for me. So I was pretty ballsy. And I tell you once I hit San Francisco, uh, it was just it, you know it, it, it was like the the psychedelics all came out. Everything was just great. I, I had, I knew I was free and happy. I knew for myself, I knew how to, I knew that I had to get out of that environment. Mm. And, to, to survive. And some people will stay in their environment, like my high school friends did. They stayed in their environment, and they they fared very well. They're a wonderful couple uh, at, that live in Salt Lake. And I admire them. They admire me for like just just breaking the doors down and, and going. So um, and then um, are we talking? Are we just talking about about our first relationship? Are we talking? Well, I was gonna I was gonna ask you that I was gonna ask you that I question, but here, Rich, I'm not quite sure. no, I wanted to. I was, I was gonna ask you that question, but I want to hit a couple of um, comments here. Um, Brandon, who. Um, I've chatted with a little bit. Brandon was, he's super sweet. He's somebody who contributed to season two. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Um, he's, he says, as a gay Asian male, Getty is an awesome person oh. and a great inspiration to me. And I am fortunate enough to have accepting parents. I never knew till recently. Oh. Brandon, that's fantastic that your parents are accepting. And oh my God. Getty, Brandon, yeah. Getty is an inspiration to all of us. So, mm. oh, um, but it's super sweet. sweet. Yeah. So Thank Getty, you, Getty, what um, was your... Tell, tell us about your first date. Do you remember your first date? So put it this way. You get to San Francisco. You're 18 years old. You just busted out of, out, out of, um, um, what's the town? I already forgot it. Ogden, Utah. Thank you. I, I was going to say Bravo. <laughs> Ogden, you're in San Francisco. Like how long did it take for you to have a date or have a moment? Like, was that where you had your first sexual experience as a gay man? Oh my God. Uh, I always say that, that if any of you know San Francisco, Anybody know the J Church line and the 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 actual trolley that <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. The actual trolley that comes out of the tunnel. I mean, uh -huh. this was so symbolic. Uh huh. The actual trolley that comes out of the tunnel and and you're I think it's right. It's below Castro. I think it's like I forgot the name of the street, but it comes out of that tunnel. And that door opened, and I saw uh, uh, the conductor, you know, the driver, and we just hooked eyes. And I said, "Well, who are you? And who are you?" And we hooked up for about like three months. Wow. <laughs> so that was my that was my beginning. Did you get free <laughs> transportation? Also, did he like give you free oh, rides? I got, a, I got a muni card. Ooh. Do you know what a muni card is? No. That's a, a pass. If anybody lived in San Francisco, it used to be these, they used to give out these little plastic passes, you know, that you would buy. And, and it was called a muni card. So I had a free muni card for, I don't know, for a couple of years, actually. I used it. <laughs> that was one of the benefits. But yeah, no. Okay. And then I just, uh, 
well, you know, and then I, I just, I stayed in San Francisco and just, uh, did a lot of theater. I, I, you know, I, I was a street singer in San Francisco. So I used to sing out in the streets and, um, that's kind of how I learned how to sing actually. And, um, I just was free. I mean, it was, it was like getting out of prison mm -hmm. for me. It was like somebody unlocked the door yeah. and I had, I was fortunate because I had probably a kind of a different mental take on things where once the door was open, I didn't have to worry. I didn't worry about my parents. I knew that they were going to do what they, what they were going to do. And my father even told me, he said that, um, if I don't go to school and become a doctor or something that they would totally cut me off for a while. And they did, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, not, we spoke, but monetarily wise or any kind. They you were on your own, me. right? I was on my own, you know, and I, and, and I had so many great people in my life who, who were like angels that just kind of pushed me here, pushed me there. And even to this day, so, you know, as much as I can't, I mean, there's a lot of pain, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, I can't disregard all of that, but it was fun. You know, I, those days I really, really miss, I miss those wonderful, we miss the hippie day, you know, hippie era, because it was in the seventies. Glory hole so, days. <laughs> yeah, glory I've heard. Why, no, yeah, are the they over? I've yeah, never no, seen any in real life. No, are they over? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> well, I mean, that was a time when we had to like hide and, you know. Right. People yeah. used to hook up in bathrooms, now I just hook up on the dance floor. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, you know, once you're, <laughs> that was good, I like that for a <laughs> The one thing that's good is, is that, yeah. that um, if you're in the theater, you know, I, I, there wasn't much judgment it, for me in my community. There wasn't. So, um, uh, and then, and then I, I, I'll tell you what happened to me, which was really interesting. Then I'll, then I'll, I'll stop talking. But um, the thing is, is that when I started, in the theater in New York and everything was just fantastic. And I had boyfriends and the whole thing. And then, and then when I started going, getting involved in Hollywood movies, then I kind of like a little bit was in the closet because, mm. you know, I didn't want people to know I was making money and that whole thing. You know, I kind of went through that whole, whole sphere of things. But the one thing that I did know is, is that I never thought I would get as far as I did in the, in the eighties. So I held on to that. And it wasn't until later until actually really in 86 that I really fully came out because I've, I've been with my partner for 35 years now, John. So, well, if, now you, if you've got, you weren't with him for 35 years at that point, you were, no. you're, you're now with him for 35 years. Yes. I'm now with him okay. for 35 years, which we met in 1980, 80, 85 or six. 86. <laughs> Tell John 86. hello. Getty has the Hi, most, John. the sweetest, most wonderful husband, John. Mm. I love yeah. John. He's a great man. So, um, so 80, 86. So, uh, but you know, I sewed my oats in, in, in New York. I mean, and then of course, you know, I went through the AIDS crisis too. So it was pretty, pretty scary with that. It was, I, st I was living in New York in the seventies and the, uh, I lived there from 73, to, I was, yeah, no, 75 to uh, 92. So mm. we all went through that really horrible, scary people, yeah. a scary crisis. And, and the theater was hit really bad. Yeah. And, um, you know, and those were really, really hard time. I lost a lot of friends, um, to, you know, and I, and I should say myself, a lot of my friends lost a lot of friends at that time. So um, uh, that's my saga, I guess. That that's that's the story that I end with. I guess I don't want to end it on a, a slow, a low note because actually, well, no, that's real. I've been very lucky. I've been very, very and lucky. I mean, it's period. you've because I know you and I know your relationship with John and and to have come from uh, Ogden, Utah, in the situation you were in, and to be now in this loving relationship for thirty five years with this wonderful man. I think that's an inspiration as well. Like to the people who um, commented 
about not being able to come out, like the guy who was commenting about his family business uh, preventing him, it's case in point. Like if you take that step and you be true to yourself, as Trevor was saying, like the world, the true world uh, will open up sure. to you. Like the world that you're meant to have. Like it may be super lonely, and you, you may think, "Oh my God, I, I'll never meet anybody, or I'll never have friends." Um, it's not true. It's just like you make friends as, as a person in the closet or a straight person. You know, it 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 happens, and you don't have to. Yeah. It's scary, and a lot of people live in fear of making that change. I totally understand that. Sure. But it's so worth it. Yeah. You know, you lose a lot maybe, but you also gain a lot and you may not lose as much as you think. You know, like when I came out. Your fear, you build this fear that's worse than reality. I think you so. Because you, you don't even know what the reality is going to be. It's you like you're guessing. Was, yeah. You you kind of consider yeah. all the possible end results. I, and the worst I one was. Go ahead, Trevor. No, you're good. I just was good. I, I was just going to say, I always found in my lifetime people that are there to always support you. There's, there's, there's plenty of people to do that. You have to trust that because I, I, I just, there's people out there now, the world has changed where there, there are people, no matter where you're at, that will support you mm -hmm. in your yes. area or wherever you need to be. Yeah. I really believe that. You gravitate towards those people. Well, and there's organizations, yeah, I mean, there's individuals as you're talking about, but there's even, there's organizations that will help you. There's, you know, you can get on the phone yeah. and call somebody um, yeah. and, you know, it's you yeah. know, if you're younger, that like the Trevor Foundation, not yeah. this Trevor, but the you no. know, there's lots of lots of foundations out there yeah. that can help. I um, I was reading a comment someone from Albuquerque mentioned, um, not to get off. I mean, still in on topic of being gay and stuff. Uh, this Albuquerque guy commented saying, "Well, why is it that straight guys?" What did he say? It's really interesting. I'm gonna quote him here. Um, it, uh, Another thing that puzzles me is why straight men react so violently to gays. It's not as if we're competing for a woman's attention. I find that the men that suppress gay men are really closeted themselves. You know, the ones that are like exerting energy into pushing gays down, they feel affected. Buttons are being pressed internally. You know, real straight guys don't feel threatened by gay men. No, you know like what I mean? they embrace them. They're busy flirting with women. They don't have time in their lives to dedicate themselves to pushing gay men. So if there's guys bullying gay men, they're really reflecting, not reflecting, they're, there's a word, projecting. they're projecting their own self-hate onto you. You know, there was a guy in middle school who used to bully me. And later down the road, decades later, He's sending me dick pics and I find out he's gay. So in hindsight, I realized I was making him feel something, made him feel very uncomfortable and he pushed me down. So I didn't have to make him feel that, you know, had I known that at the time, I would have felt a lot better about myself, you know, someone like, like these men, these men in government positions who are trying to, to implement laws against gays to take gay rights away. A lot of them are closeted themselves. Oh, it's funny when we find this out, what, when, yeah, like they're there's... overcompensating. So the thing is, why are these straight men like violently attacking gay men? Odds are they're not straight. Well, I think there's truth to that, but I also think there are straight men who are so again, it's doctrine, it's what their religion says. It's it's or even if they have feelings, it's not sexual feelings, but they're feeling um impotent, they're feeling impotent and they need to lash out at who they see as the weaker. Person. I met a guy last night who told me his story growing up and his dad and his abusive relationship with his dad. And he told me, he said, his dad would try to correct him since he was young. He's like, stop acting like a fag. Stop acting gay. And I was like, oh my God, how old are you? And your dad would say this. He's like, as long as I can remember since he was a baby. And he said in middle school, he found a box of dildos under his dad's bed. And I was like, well, that's a big red flag if your dad is telling you to stop being gay. And then he said when he was 15, his dad strangled him and almost killed him. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God, your dad is not reflecting, projecting. projecting. He's projecting his self-hate onto his son because he doesn't want his son to be gay. And I was like, I, I hate to tell you this, but your dad is totally in the closet. I, I heard a great quote, which is that bullying is a call for help. Is someone actually calling for help? Yeah, yeah. No, and I, and, it, and I, I, I really believe that. You know, I did anybody. Have you guys seen the Power of the Dog? Not yet. No. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful movie about uh, suppression 
and 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 a man being gay and it's you know it's in the it, it's cowboy period right turn of the century but uh it's worth seeing it's it's a really it, it's, it's like, like a western yeah, no it's 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 it, but it takes place on a is that cowboy. the one with, who's in that that's the one gonna do cumberbatch cumberbatch okay. and uh, wonderful and jesse Clemens and yeah yeah his wife that's um, great um oh shit uh my brain Actually, oh right, uh, Chris, Claire, no, not Claire Danes. Chris yeah, Chris yes. does. I heard it's great. <laughs> John, John, what is the casting director? So that's why. <laughs> yeah, wow. he, he always knows. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, uh, yeah, and I think that that movie actually proves that. So sometimes when I, I was never bullied. Uh, well, that's not true, but I fought back. I really did fight back. So uh, uh, when when somebody called me a Jap, I remember that oh. at one time, and then and then called me a fag. And I remember uh, my my thing is, is that probably which is unusual for an Asian kid, right? Was was I walked them back? <laughs> you what? <laughs> you hit him? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that the only yeah. time you you ever got uh, violent in school? No, because, but, uh, no, uh, no, really, I wasn't. No, those were just, those were just really random. If yeah. I was pushed to that point, mm -hmm. you know, if I was pushed to that point, I was really good. I was one of those kids too, that, um, like I had a friend that was really, really bully and I'd have to stand in between them. So I was, I was proud of myself with that because he, because he's, we still keep in touch and that was, that was really, um, but that was instinctual. You know, that was like, I just was just, I could get so angry. Yeah. You know, I could, you know, you just, it's, it's that emotional thing where you just want to, you can push them down, you know, and I, I was able to do that. And I never got uh, clobbered back. I think people were just kind of, maybe it was just, wow, this Asian kid knows karate. We better stay to where we can, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. It's That's probably what it was. I don't know. It's like the scene you had in um, the disappointments when you're outside the window and you're trying to free the bee, and <laughs> and Steve is on the other side. He's like, oh, I'm coming out there, and I've got a black belt. <laughs> right. The real Getty could have taken him on. I should have said, "Well, so do I." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, speaking of that, just to pivot for a minute, we haven't had the opportunity to have you on these shows yet, and um, you know, I just want to talk about your experience doing the show and um your the oh, character okay. and like um tell me what your thoughts were um about you, you may know that you hired me last minute <laughs> literally that's so true it was literally last minute so I, I have said this before so the 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 part that getty plays uh, originally was called jim j and it was called jim j because it was written for jim j bullock so just as james campbell's character is called james Jim Jay's character is called Jim Jay. Mm -hmm. and, um, but Jim Jay ended up having to drop out of the project. So then he was recast with um, Michael Corbett. And then Michael and I realized as we were talking um, through the process that he was not right for the part. Like Michael's got a whole different quality. And then when that happened, I knew, and we were right coming up to start of production. And the you know, person who popped into my head was the person I hadn't talked to in 23 years. And it was Getty. And um, I and, and I said to him, I said, I'm much older and I'm bald now. I don't you know did you. say, I forgot, you did say that to me. <laughs> and I was like, perfect. It doesn't matter. Yeah, We're yeah, all much older. You hadn't seen me either. Like you, last time you saw me, I had no, black I was, hair. Yeah, I was, I was shocked by the gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. It's true, I though. I walked right past you. No, so, and, and, you know, Getty and I, so we hadn't spoken in a long time and yet it was like the moment we got back in touch and, and saw each other for the first time, it was like instant picked, no, picked right up where we left changed, off. Really nothing. It, we just picked up wherever we left off. Nothing. You right. know what I mean? I really appreciated that. Well, and I but love the I fact also, that you agreed to do it because, um, you know, well, a lot of the script, Rich, I read the script. Yeah, and it's it's really lovely writing. Well, thank you. So it was kind of like it was, kind of, and you know what? You know, as an actor and as as an Asian actor, a lot of times we don't get we don't get these roles. So it's it's not 
it was just, it just made so much sense to me. You know, I'd been acting for a long time, but most of the stuff that I've been doing as I get older, I've been, oops, I'm a little off, but can you hear me? Oh, you know. most of the stuff that I've been, most of the stuff that I've been getting has been like, you know, little spots here, there, little spots here. So as you get older, you know, you're also now, um, it was an ageism, you know, in this business. So, so kind of, this was a, a, a really wonderful opportunity. And I was honestly, I was scared to death because I also was worried about memorizing lines, (laughs) 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 which they all, you all prompted me. Everybody was like, you, you did great on there. There there was one, (laughs) just for the people watching, there was one um, evening. It's, it's the episode where Ray, James and Gary are in the backyard at Keith's house. Um, We shot that at night. It was, it was a long day, very long day. We Mm -hmm. shot it at night and, um, Get, let's just say Getty had had a little trouble remembering his lines. Um, he yes. did it. He did it multiple times correctly, and it was great. But there were times where, like, I saw you getting so frustrated, and it was, it was actually kind of funny in the sense that, like, taking your frustration out of it and your own, like, you know, your emotional reaction. Sorry, doorbell. Um, I mean, hold on. Yes, I'm hearing you, Rich. Hold on. Oh, okay. Um, that's Getty's kitchen, everybody. Doesn't it look homey? Oh, there's Zuzu. Oh, that's, Zuzu. That's Zuzu right there. Okay, that's enough. Okay, okay, good girl. Um, so, yeah, no. so you, you, so, and bottom line is, um, th- there was that one funny evening where you couldn't remember your lines, but beyond that, like you just people comment, which I don't know if you've looked at the YouTube comments on the episodes, how much you're like the heart of the show. You bring so much emotion and and depth oh. to your performance. Um, like Getty is very self-conscious about watching himself on screen. And we had this um, screening, small screening, um, when the sh- right before the show premiered. And he was very uptight and uncomfortable. And then John, what did John say to you after watching for like about 10 minutes? He leaned over to you and he said something. Do you remember? He said, no, he said, he said, you're good. <laughs> That's all I needed to say. Yeah. Like, uh, see, I'm, I'm one of those very, you know, self-deprecate but also i think most it, of us are i think yeah but you know but trevor also i hadn't done something in a long time you know so i haven't really seen this old face for a long you yeah. know I, that's a lot of time for this to be on screen you know <laughs> what i mean and, and so when i was looking at that i was like going, mm-hmm. you know and i it's something you just sort of have to adjust and get used to you know we're, we're really vain unfortunately and as, as as i get older I get I get even more vain yeah. But, um, but the, it was really the writing, Rich. It was beautiful writing. It was it was really felt and yeah. And and I really, I I, I it would have been stupid of me to say no. You know, I, just to get myself, you know, situated again and 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 start. But I I had a really great time, and I didn't. You know, I think it's such a. It, it's such a joy to work with somebody that you've known for a long time. It makes a lot of difference rather than when you go onto a set and things yeah. are so, you know what I mean? That you have to introduce yourself. You have to explain yourself. You have to audition all over yeah. again, you know, that time. but I didn't really uh, feel like I had to, to do that here. And when I, when I screwed up, people laughed. So that made me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, I mean, that's, that's one of the things we've, we've had, um, even in review, reviews, print reviews online or, or even like actual papers um, that people talk about the, um, the uh, chemistry between the three main characters. And I think a lot, of, a lot of that has to do with the fact that you and I have known each other for so long. And I think that comes through yeah. just the comfort level and the familiar familiarity. Mm-hmm. I can never say that word. Say it for me. Familiarity. Familiar. Yeah, thank you. you know, I'll move my mouth. You say it. Familiarity. familiarity. Yeah, I said it. And you can say <laughs> project. Um, project. Um, so yeah, and you know, anyway, it was I, I'm really excited about um actually I'll put this out there to everyone who's watching. Um, you know, we're doing a fundraiser for season two. Um the show cannot be made unless viewers who love the show come to our um, Indiegogo campaign, our fundraiser, and contribute five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you can give. Ask your rich uncle for money and give it to us. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you know, you don't get a lot of. I mean, we're told we're quality gay entertainment, and that's that's what the show is. And 
you don't find that being funded very much by uh, major studios. So we have to make it ourselves. And when I say we, it's us and Getty and it's the crew, but it's also you guys. So um, please check out the fundraiser because I'm bringing this up right now specifically because the ideas that I have for Getty's character in um, season two, which I've already shared with Getty are so, it's so good. It's so good. He's, I love it. Yeah. He's going to be, um, he's get, he gets to play the whole gamut. Of, of stuff so um and, and this time i'll remember my lines my well letter. you know what we'll, we, we won't necessarily hope we'll have a prompter for you if necessary oh yes <laughs> our script supervisor will be on point you, you can you can write your lines on your yeah, arm but then, but then i'll be doing my lines like this how are you i guess i believe <laughs> i know exactly no you, you're gonna have I to memorize exactly. <laughs> i'm sitting there one. can't I'm do sure it we'll give you more than a few takes um, a Getty can't see this, but there's a couple people saying some moments they really liked of your performance. One was when you were going through the cigarette buds on the ground um, in one of the episodes. Another was when uh, the moment Ray catches Gary smoking and you pretend like it wasn't happening, which is one of my favorite moments, too. All right, in that last episode, the beginning of that last episode, it's like, You're Gary, are you smoking? No. <laughs> it's like, that was good direction, too. I give give you that thank well it was the timing was perfect the timing was perfect the direction was brilliant i must say and the, and the camera work we, we did with jason just the way we wanted it was one of the oh, because again budget we didn't have um the option of yeah. uh, getting a lot of different lenses and i insisted that we have to find a way to get a zoom lens I, for that last I episode like say that, i'd like to say this you would not believe what rich had to do to go through hoops to to get what he got. It was an extraordinary thing to watch. I remember one time you had to run down to San Diego to get a camera. Yeah. I'm sitting there calling you and it, it's an extraordinary thing to, to make a piece. It takes a lot of a lot of pieces to come together to make anything. And, and um, I, I'm really grateful to you because well, it you. was an inspirational the thing all the nooks and pains and aches that i had had nothing to do with what the achievement that you made and you have to people out there i hope you understand how difficult it is to 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 put a, a, a something like this together in the time and and just just the obstacles hmm. so um it's Thank really you. important yeah i really if you can contribute because it's just it just it's just a phenomenal to watch. I almost wish that, you know, you because I know you wanted people, everyone's going to come on the set to, to see, you know, you were trying to do a fundraiser with that and that type of thing. And those things are just extraordinary. Um, but anyway, just kudos to you, Rich. Kudos for the fact that it, you and Stephen, you know, have yeah. this. It's a rare collaboration. Of, yeah, it was, it was... Well, there, there was difficult. there was that collaboration on the production end, on pulling it together, but there was also the collaboration oh on the, the creative collaboration with everybody on set, with, you know, our crew, just as the foundation, but then, you know, cast, you, James, right. um, and, and everyone who yeah. came on who was like a, a guest, like a Reese and, and Luke and Chuck, mm -hmm. and like everybody just brought their, their A game and it was... Yeah. And we're going to bring a lot of these people back and expand their roles and see more fun with them interacting with the main characters too. So all, all the funny moments, um, there'll be callbacks. There'll be lots of, uh, sa I think, satisfying moments in season two uh, for that. For So, yeah. It was a very professional set, um, even though a percentage of the crew members were from the film school. Everyone was on their A game. Everyone was doing their job. Everyone was like happy to be there. It was such a great experience that I wasn't sure, you know, I was like, there's not a lot of money in this. So I wasn't sure what to expect. But it, I mean, I just last week, this past Monday, I was on this big Netflix show with like 15 production trucks, my own trailer, beautiful craft services, and all these like big actors. And I was like, it felt the equivalent. You know, we didn't have 15 production trucks, but we had like, a smaller but similar quality crew and it just felt felt big yeah that's crew was really that's kudos to steve kudos to steve kubine yeah. our, our uh yeah my, 
executive co-producer, co-executive producer. Um, so anyway, you know, we're coming up on an hour here, so um, let, let's let's end our, our talk. But um, just one more time, guys, um, obviously most of you are watching this because you are uh, you, you like the show and you've seen the show. Uh, please share it with your friends. Let's keep the yes. show growing. Um, it's, it's so, I can't tell you how important that is to share the show, but also share the, um, the fundraiser because we want to make season two. Everybody I hear from wants to see a season two. Um, but again, it's, it, I can't even Zuzu, even <laughs> Zuzu and Archie who's locked away right now. Um, but it's imperative. It's like, yes. guys, we can't make the show yeah. unless you help us. Yeah. It's like, I, I, I can't as, stress that as enough. much as we would love, uh, a platform to pick it up and finance this it it may not happen um, well, which is okay right i mean we don't we, depend on them to make this we can we can do it um and, and, and it, it just takes a little bit of support from everybody yeah so and and if you think well you know you don't have a lot of money to give totally understand that but you don't realize we have fourteen thousand two hundred subscribers to this channel at this point if everybody gave five or ten dollars um, it, we'd be pushing it. You know, and we're, we can get there. It's not like we actually have over a third of our funding already. We're which at thirty-seven really percent. There, there's. It looks like it's thirty percent, thirty-six percent if you look at the campaign. But we've actually gotten a thousand dollars cash from uh, our buddy Dave up in the Yosemite area. Yeah. Um, so if you don't want to do it by the campaign, if by chance you can send checks or PayPal. And thank or you, Venmo. KJ and Gilbert. He just contributed now. Damn! Thank you. Mm, I love that. You um, you know, it, it means a lot. It means so much to us. You know, we loved working on the show. Mm -hmm. um, it meant so much to us and to to Getty, you know, and to our... We have such a great experience working on the show together. Yeah, and I can't we, wait to do more scenes with Getty and James and... Anyone else? You can't wait to... Not really to. this one. <laughs> <laughs> we're already broken up, so we're not going to share a lot of scenes together anyways. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, you don't know what's coming in season two. I, you know, <laughs> I, haven't, just, I haven't shown you the scripts yet. Um, so yes, so please help us make the show. We want to, we want to do it. We want to bring it to you. You guys want it. It really comes down to every individual mm -hmm. helping out and you go to see a movie, pay 18 bucks, 20 bucks for a movie. Why not divert that movie for like one movie to us? Mm -hmm. And, uh, we're going to, we're going to do Makes basically sense. enough footage where it's going to be like two movies. Yeah, so when, when you're at the bar get... and you're like on drink eight, save that ninth drink. Exactly. Thing. Exactly. Um, you don't and, need that last drink. By the way, if you're in LA, speaking of bars, on Monday, oh, yeah. Monday, Martin Luther King's uh, Jr.'s birthday, Monday evening at Rocco's in West Hollywood, we're doing a fundraiser. And yes. um, you're going to see us there in person. Maybe we'll get Getty on the phone again. We'll see. Um, perhaps James, too. We'll, we'll get you guys projected up on the screen so people can say hi. Mm -hmm. um, other cast and crew members are there. 6.30 to 9.30 come just show face say hi it's a low pressure deal the, the thing is you walk in the door you pay 20 bucks that gets you um two for one drinks two for one drinks from 6 30 to 9 30. Mm -hmm. that's special that's you get a wristband you're the only one who gets that if you've got the wristband mm -hmm. so um that's uh that's it don't want to make this big sales spiel this is about coming out stories it was about getting to gary yeah. slash getty a little bit a little bit um, of everything a little bit of it it's like a Bonnet. It's an experience. <laughs> All right. So um, from us, the disappointments, thank you for watching. Special guest star, Gary <laughs> slash Getty. Getty Watanabe is here. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. And, and you know, we were throwing out all this at you. Fundraiser. Watch the show, share the show, share the show, tell your friends, subscribe to the channel. Super important. Um, oh God, see, this is what happens when you're over you know, in your late fifties. Things just go out of your head. There was a point. Wait till, there wait was... till you hit sixty-five. You're really gonna go on that. Mm, you're the point. <laughs> Check in with us next Thursday with Alan Locker in the locker room. That's the point. That's what I'm here for. Yes. So um, we are going to be on the locker room, yeah. all of us, for the first time. You get to see all of us Thursday. Look, you can see it in my Instagram, Trevor's Instagram, um, and you can see it on the YouTube channel. We'll be uh, promoting it as well. So, uh, thank you guys. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna let you go now. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. <laughs> drink your Ovaltine. That's right. All right, okay. guys. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Love you guys thank very much. You.
Bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, Getty. Bye, Getty. Bye. Wait, Getty, stay here. Don't leave us, Getty. But we're oh, going to leave okay. you. Bye. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool.